Hello, my name is Sciencebeard and I've been away for a few weeks. And as a result, I've not been doing videos. And also, as another result, I'm back from a family holiday, so this means that I'm super tired now. I'm looking forward to a few weeks of just regular school weeks and work for a good rest. So although I've been away, I've kept an eye on Peter's column and noticed a pivot. Well, a mini pivot. He went from criticizing the use of face masks, or as I prefer to call them, face nappies, well, think about it, to not doing that so much anymore. Instead, he has gone back to sowing the seeds of fear about a generalized feeling of dread in which the male specializes. Before I get to Peter's latest column, I would like to share a strategy for saving face when you've been wrong and been wrong publicly. What you can do is to change the topic of conversation. Rather than double down and insist that you are right, you simply and subtly change the topic. For example, I thought wrongly, not having seen the film, that the voice of Maui in Moana was performed by Jason Momoa, instead of The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, when it was in fact, of course, Mr. Johnson. A quick Google proved me wrong, and I read that bit out loud, and then talked about the good things Jason Momoa has starred in, and that I thought he might have been a good choice for Maui. Anyway, you get the idea. I pivoted from who played Maui to, hey, what a good actor Jason Momoa is. Peter, after coining the phrase face nappy and insisting over several weeks that there was no evidence for face masks protecting you, which of course wasn't the idea, they should protect those that serve you, made a slight adjustment to his column. He talked about how he's growing a beard. Nice. He said it was because he was feeling a bit rebellious, apparently. Anyway, I will look afresh at his most recent column from my current timeline, 30th of August 2020. We rant about the BBC proms, yet make ourselves slaves to coronaphobia. Okay, this is so inaccurate. Even the first word is wrong in the context. Peter casts himself in the we, which Piers Morgan would like to call the woke crowd. In other words, those people who have had a thought about, well, people unlike themselves. For those who don't know, Rule Britannia will still be performed at the BBC proms, but not with words, apparently. And for people like Peter and Piers, this goes too far. So really picking the fight worth fighting here. But they don't have to, of course, coming from and living surrounded by privilege. Peter and Piers are afraid of losing some fairly inconsequential cultural right, while minorities and women literally get less out of life than non-minorities and men because of the way that systems are designed or that institutions function. If you aren't aware of how this might be, ask yourself the question. If I was a minority person or a woman, do I have the same experience when I have to deal with the police? Or people working in a hardware store? Would I be more likely or less likely to be asked whether I was a terrorist? Or to get my boobs out? Or would people be warned to stand up against the wall because I'm approaching them? And if you think this is harmless fun, then you have never talked to a woman or a member of a minority. I will have a stab at why Rule Britannia, first performed in 1740, may be problematic in modern era Britain. The lyrics were written about a hundred years before the abolition of slavery, 1833 or 1838 or even later if you like, and include the gem, Britannia rules the waves, Britons never will be slaves. Ironically, to some extent, when Britannia ruled the waves, there was a lot of slavery about and not unrelated. And if I was part descended from somebody eventually freed after 1833, I would hear these words and think, well, some of my ancestors were slaves, so if Britons can never be slaves, Britons must not include me. Now, I've no idea whether that is what is going through somebody's mind if their family history includes enslaved family members, but I grew up in post-war and re-education Germany, and we don't sing the contentious parts of the German national anthem anymore. I also know that Rule Britannia isn't the national anthem, but shouldn't that make it easier to jettison it? I know I would replace the German national anthem in a heartbeat, or at least some of its words. Ah, shit, so I'm 850 words into this episode, and I have not gone past the second part of the headline. Yet make ourselves slaves to coronaphobia. This is again a lovely display of Peter's utter lack of understanding of a great many things. Now, again, as a German, I don't like to bandy about comparisons with Hitler, the Third Reich, and the Holocaust. These are sensitive issues. 
But apparently for some British people, trivializing slavery is absolutely okay. And again, I'm aware that the word slave crops up in expressions and can be used humorously. However, Peter is referring to woke politics, which I like to call having some empathy and not being a dick. Although I freely admit that face nappy was much snappier. So wearing a face mask for literally minutes of the day in order to protect those who serve you, I mean literally serve you, since shop assistants, waiters and waitresses and so forth are much more likely to catch coronavirus, link in the description, than people not working in a public facing occupation, and so transmitted to their families. Is the equivalent of being a slave? And you don't have to. Like so many idiots who deny coronavirus is a thing, you could just say that you mainly talk and breathe out your ass, and therefore you're already wearing a mask where it counts. He then goes on to talk about other stuff, of course, so I picked a few. When Britain actually did rule the ways, my late father helped it to do so. In peacetime, this involved years of rigorous training, harsh discomfort, and long months of separation from home. In wartime, well, you probably know what it, what it involved, if you think about it, that's why we did not become the slaves of Hitler in the 1940s, because we still controlled the seas that surround us. Does Peter know that empire wasn't great for the colonies? Well, you probably know what it involved if you think about it. The people ruled by the empire did not have the same freedoms that British citizens had and which Peter wants for UK citizens right now, despite there being a good reason to give them up temporarily. He alludes to empire because Britain ruled the waves before the Second World War. It was the eventual intervention by the US which supplied the necessary vessels to keep Britain afloat, so to speak. There are many reasons why we are not the slaves of Hitler, from Hitler's incompetence as a military leader to the banding together of different countries, but it wasn't Britain on its own which saved Europe from fascist rule. And this is why, controversially, I like Peter. He shows why people refuse to think critically. It's hard. Much easier and nicer to think that you live in an exceptional country with an exceptional people. If you like Peter, you like him because he's not as clever as his brother and holds simplistic views which you never have to justify to anyone. By my guess, 40 well-handled destroyers commanded and crewed by serious, well-trained fighting men probably made the crucial difference when it mattered. But my father, like most of those who actually do the hard work which defends the freedoms of both pinkos and jingos, was not much given to bombast. Let people tell you who they are. That's my motto. And then believe them. The first sentence is one to savour. Peter acknowledges that he's not an expert in military history, but then states that it is probable that his conclusion is correct. Well, I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm guessing that vitamin D supplements helps with coronavirus. It may not, of course, I'm just guessing, but you get my point. Then he points to his father and says that his father lost too many friends, but he did so fighting a war. So war is the only way to defend freedom? I lived through the Cold War and I'm glad that isn't true. Also, was it a good thing to send so many soldiers to their death? Could it have been prevented? Well, yes, we've learned quite a bit from the early 20th century, hopefully. Although this government seems keen to violate foreign waters to drop off refugees. Not to mention international law. And here's where I don't understand Peter's reasoning. My guess is that there isn't much to it. See what I did there? You want the freedom to go out, wear a face nappy for the times that you are near other people, other than when you are eating and drinking? Simple. What you want, Peter, is for people to ignore advice that would protect their loved ones. And what's more, you want the right to spread your ignorance and naughty viruses to other people without consequence. Well, even with freedom, you have to take the consequences. I would like to wear a face mask wherever I please, pandemic or no. Do I have that right? It would certainly increase my personal freedom as we are monitored by CCTV and possibly face recognition. And no, I don't. I have to tell the police who I am, what I look like. My face is my passport going across borders, literally. So putting on a mask can be liberating. Peter is just willing to metaphorically die on that hill because he can afford to. His actual life isn't more at risk because of it, whereas shop assistants and people in poorly paid jobs may pay with their lives. I could go on, but I won't. See you next time.